I can't believe these people can go so far like this. Romans 1, 28, 32. And even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, God gave them over to reprobate mind, do those things which are not convenient, being filled with all unrighteousness, fornication, wickedness, covetousness, maliciousness, full of envy, murder, debate, deceit, malignity, whispered, backbiters, haters of God, despiteful, proud, boasters, inventors of evil things, disobedient to parent, without understanding, covenant breakers without natural affection, implicable, unmerciful, who know with the judgment of God that they which commit such things are worthy of death. Notice the word of God continues, says, not only those who do them, or not only do the same, but have pleasure in them that do them. Galatians 3.1 Oh foolish Galatians, who has bewitched you that you should not obey the truth? Before whose eyes Jesus Christ has been evidently set forth crucified among you. They set up new world order so that they can control the world and bring everybody on the Roman Catholic Church. The affirmative task we have now is to create a new world order. Now we can see a new world coming into view. A world in which there is the very real prospect of a new world order. That I myself that we needed a new world order. Pope Benedict XVI is calling for a new world financial order in the third encyclical of his pontificate. Globalized economy. The document was released just hours before the G8 summit. So notice. The power behind the scene secret societies. Notice what is Skull and Bones, Illuminati, Masons, and all them groups. They have one master. Reason the leaders of papacy or called Roman Catholic hate United States is because when the pilgrims father they came to United States they didn't want to have anything to do with Pope and kings that's one of the reason they create gangs for Protestant children to kill them and destroy them they make them hate each other so that they can control United States when all who wear America's uniform remain the cornerstone of our national defense the anchor global security have to shape an international order that can meet the challenges of our generation. The international order we seek is one that can resolve the challenges of our times. A new world order is emerging. Gordon Brown's verdict as he closes the G20 summit. From America to Ethiopia, they all signed up to a trillion dollar boost for world trade. We'll have reaction around the world and ask what it means for Britain also tonight. the opportunity to forge for ourselves and for future generations a new world order as I saw this last days as I 60 verse 2 notice for behold the darkness shall cover the earth and grows darkness the people and then God promises people those that we're gonna come out from among them and touch not the unclean but the Lord shall rise upon thee, and his glory shall be seen upon thee. This is the promise that God has promised those that we're now going to partake of this satanic devilish dresses and unclean fornication, almost naked. Even some of them are naked. Wow, is this fashion or madness? When Adam and Eve sinned in Genesis, when they saw that God was coming, they covered their nakedness. When, when people are naked in our last days and almost naked and half naked, means they demonic possessed. Because if you're not demonic possessed, you're not going to uncover yourself. 
That's what Isaiah says. For, for behold, darkness shall cover the earth and gross darkness the people. Most of the parties were set up by them. The devil's red mass and the two horn on top of it. They try to prove to the whole world that they are agencies of Satan that are leading the whole world in darkness. But a lot of people don't understand. Raising the dance sexual dances because they want everybody to dance like this. They own all the fashion companies. So they're using fashion companies like never before. Their final goal is to make people walk naked on the street. Once in a while you see some of them walking naked on the street because they want the whole world to follow them. Revelation 18 verse 2 And he cried mightily with a strong voice saying, Babylon the great is fallen and is fallen and is become the habitation of devils and the whole of every foul spirit and the cage of every unclean and hateful bird. Wow! Look how God identified these people, unclean, demonic, possessed, hateful birds. It's like a bird that a dude on themselves that looks so dirty, half naked, naked, and even almost naked people, sodomite groups. Wow. Let's continue. Verse 3. For all nations have drunk of the wine of the wrath of her fornication, and the kings of the earth, or president of the earth, have committed fornication with her, and the merchant of the earth are wax rich through the abundance of her delicacies. Notice what it says in verse 4. And I heard another voice from heaven saying, Come out of her, my people. That she be not partakers of her sin, that she receive not her place. For her sin hath reached unto heaven, and God has remembered her iniquities. This parable video will blow up your mind, so watch it carefully. Matthew 13, 34 says that Jesus spoke to the multitudes in parables. and Transport a person through time? As in time travel? This is impossible. No, it is possible, Russell. Traveled over 100 years into the future. <laughs> over 100 years to the 20th, no, the 21st century? Correct. You? <laughs> this is an absurdity. It is the truth, Russell. No, as time travel is impossible. I'm afraid that your illness has affected your judgment more than I thought. My friend, time travel is possible. What proof can you provide? This is why I have arranged a journey for you. A journey? For me? Yes. Into the future. <laughs> oh, come now. Russell, you must see where the teaching of good morals alone will lead. You must see for yourself what happens when we remove the authority of Christ out of life. I know how this will be taken by you, but I am sure this manner of dress arouses sinful passions in the customers as they walk by. Sinful passions? Yes, sinful passions are promiscuity, especially in the younger males. We must be careful as to the example we portray to our young people, for the goodness of all society. Sir, I appreciate you voicing your opinion, and I'll be sure to let my father know, and I want to thank you. But to be honest, this is the first complaint we've had like this. Our customers, most of them don't seem to mind this sort of thing. Okay? Stop the movie! You must stop this movie! The man on the screen just blasphemed the name of the Lord! There must be some mistake! 
You must stop this movie. This is an abomination. Eddie, I wanted to speak with you again about the importance of attending a local church. Oh, I go to church, yeah. Christmas, Easter. Yes, but we need to attend church more than two times a year for spiritual growth. Oh, well, you know, at least I ain't never been to the Slammer. Slammer? Yeah, the big house, jail, clink, clink. Man, I thought my English was bad. But, Eddie, we need consistent Bible study and fellowship if we're to become mature spiritual men. Shh. Yeah. Jesse Gonzaga just hit a double with two men on. We're up three to two. Eddie, I'm attempting to talk to you about your spiritual life. Look, preacher man, with all due respect, I ain't no angel, but I ain't cheated or lied or shot at anybody. Ask people. Eddie Martinez is a good guy. Yes, these are all important virtues, Eddie, but it's important that we do more than just not offend each other. Yeah! We got another run. We're up for to do. Yeah, you stick around, preacher man. You're good luck. As a matter of fact, to be perfectly Ooh, honest. baby, you are fine. Hey, look, I'll be off in about a... How about me and you... Me, sir? You should not be talking to this woman in this manner. What would your wife say? What wife? I'm not married anymore. Anymore? Is she deceased? Deceased? You mean dead? I wish she was. I wouldn't be paying all this alimony. We're divorced. Divorced? Oh, I'm very sorry. Sorry? I'm happy. Except for the alimony. She was driving me crazy. People don't understand what I went through with this woman. I mean, dealing with her moods and her demands every day. But the Lord hates divorce. Hey, don't be dumping no guilt trip on me, all right? One out of two marriages get divorced these days. It's not like I'm the only one. Besides, it was her fault. She was driving me crazy. One out of two marriages ends in divorce. This is 50%. Oh, are you sure? Yes, I'm sure. You just trust me. We're going to have the best time. Okay. Well, who's going to get the alcohol? Tommy's older brother. Young ladies, mm -hmm. excuse me, but I could not help but overhear your conversation, and I am shocked at what you are saying. I could not believe you would want to deceive your parents in this manner. And who are you, mister? And you're also speaking of consuming strong alcoholic drink, which should be forbidden, especially for your age. Right, and so who do you think you are? Like our parents or something? Certainly not. But I am someone who has a genuine concern for your welfare, and I am your elder. We should always conduct ourselves with honesty and integrity. All right, look. You know what? I am sick and tired of people telling me what I can and cannot do. It's not like we're hurting anyone, so why don't you just chill out? What, what is this couple doing? Hey, what are you doing, mister? I cannot fathom that this young married couple would kiss in front of a child. What is becoming of them? They're not married. They're just actors in a show. Not Mary. Come on, mister, get out of the way. Scientists are supposed to observe everything they can first, record their observations, and then make public their findings. You need some help, man? I'd be glad to skip school. <laughs> Not at present, but thank you kindly for your offer. May I ask if you're familiar with the works of John Anderson? John Anderson? I don't believe I've heard of him. He lived in the late 1800s. Brilliant mind published some valuable information on the art of science and experimentation. We'll have to locate his material. Yes, please do. His discoveries are fascinating. The best part about Mr. Anderson's work is how he relates everything to the Bible. The scriptures are never wrong. Mr. Carlyle. God's holy word is so trustworthy. Mr. Carlyle. Yes? Mr. Carlyle, this is a public school. You can't talk about religion in class. And I just simply mentioned the Bible. I meant no harm by it. And the teacher informed me that she could lose her job over the matter. Well, our nation is no longer built on the biblical principles set forth by our forefathers. We haven't been able to study the Bible in public school for years. We've lost prayer in school since a Supreme Court decision in what, 1962? Children not allowed to pray in school? How unthinkable. Well, we're part of a society that for the most part lives without Christ and his word. Last evening, something very shocking occurred. I, I attended a movie with a group from the church, and the person up on the screen blasphemed the name of the Lord. Unfortunately, that happens all the time. Oh, I, I know, because I used to be in the film industry. <laughs> As a player up there on the screen? As an actor? No. Oh. <laughs> 
No, I was a booking agent for a theater chain. I was making all kinds of money, the whole packet. But I was miserable inside. Well, I say all of that because when it comes to the film industry, I've been there and I know how powerful and influential it is to society. I believe that secular entertainment is one of the biggest tools that Satan uses to mislead people. He, he desensitizes us through it. Murder, violence, sexual immorality, it, you name it. Sin has slowly but surely become acceptable to us because we see it all the time. So it, it's no longer shocking to us. But why were these things ever allowed? Well, frankly, I think that Satan's smarter than we give him credit for. And he's very deceptive. When the movie industry started back in the 30s, it was moralistic for the most part. There was a censor board that regulated what could and could not be shown on the screen. And movie makers were very careful about what they were portraying. And that's when the people didn't realize that the devil won his greatest victory. His greatest victory? How so? Because he got the name and the person of Jesus Christ out of the movies. I mean, the morals were there for a while, but the Lord himself was not. And as people became more liberated with their views, there seemed to be less and less conviction because there was no absolute authority. And that is why people can curse the name of the Lord and they don't even think about it. But how can these movie makers so mock the Lord? Do they not understand that he is the one who created them and gives them their every breath? Mr. Carlyle, it says in the Bible that the fear of God is the beginning of wisdom. If people don't hold reverence for the Lord, what can we expect? In the third chapter of Paul's second letter to Timothy, Paul warns us about the last days. In verses 1 through 5, the scriptures say that in the last days, men will be selfish, proud, without natural affection for one another, unthankful, unholy, lovers of pleasure more than lovers of God. The list goes on. From what I have seen, the state that this society is now in reminds me of the days of Noah just prior to entering the ark and of Lot and Sodom and Gomorrah. Sin appears to be as blatant and as open now as it was then. Surely these must be the last days that Paul is referring to. And the second coming of our Lord Jesus Christ is imminent. The Lord God who created all things appears to have been eliminated from your schools, your government, businesses, attacked in the arts and in your entertainment. And through these amazing inventions of the radio, television, and the movies, the devil has mightily planted sinful thoughts. I am leaving you now, Eddie. Okay, preacher, you take care. I also brought you this. A Bible, huh? Yes, God's holy word. That's all right, preacher. Hey, will you look at this? It's in Spanish. Please read it, Eddie. Wow. Yeah, I'll read it. Yeah, I have your word, Eddie. If Eddie Martinez tells you he's going to do something, he's going to do something. Now, I'm going to read this. I believe you, Eddie. May the Lord speak to you. Yeah, preacher. You're a good egg. Vaya con Dios. Eddie, there's something I must tell you. Jesus is coming back soon. The requirement, though, to enter this kingdom is that we must be absolutely perfect and without sin. Well, that leaves me out of that party. <laughs> no one is without sin, Eddie. Not one. All of us face eternal judgment and separation from God. This is why we must receive Jesus Christ into our life as Lord. He is the only one who lived a perfect life and thus became the substitute for our sins. For me, too. Yes, for you, too. He rose from the dead, proving he was God. And he wants to save us from the penalty of our sins and give us eternal life. But we must first individually receive him, Eddie. This is what it means to believe in Jesus. Uh, you know, no one ever quite explained it to me like that before. God wants us to be reconciled to himself. So much so that he gave his only son to die for us. And it's all in this book, Eddie. I pray that you will consider what I'm saying. Yeah. 
Good night, Eddie. Hey, hey, preacher. Hey, listen, I gotta confess to you something. You know, earlier when I gave you my word that I was gonna read this book, well, I was lying. lying. But that was before. Now I give you my word from my heart that I'm gonna read this book. God bless you, Eddie. Genesis. En el principio creó Dios los cielos y la tierra. Come on. In a hurry to go somewhere? Gentlemen, do not come any closer. You must leave here immediately. There's not much time. Not much time for what? I'm afraid I'm not allowed to explain, but you must leave immediately. Look, we've had enough of your little secrets, Carlisle. I want the truth, and I want it now. Look! You've only been gone for a few moments. Norris, the future. Oh, my heavens, where does one begin? It is incredible. But sin abounds. The Lord is not feared. Morals have replaced Christ, and with liberal teachings. The families are in disarray. No authority, no respect. The world lives without Jesus, while the church seems to be filled with professing Christians who do not follow the Lord they claim to believe. Yes, it appeared to be this way. I was wrong in my thinking. Very wrong, Norris. To separate the authority of Jesus from his teachings is indeed deadly, as I have just witnessed the end result. Yes, it would lead many astray. I'm so sorry I doubted you, my friend. It took great courage to do what you did, and I am forever grateful. We have been given a great privilege. We must use it for good. Yes, indeed. Norris, I believe I was witnessing the last days. Romans 13, 11 to 12. And thou knowing the time that now is a high time to awake out of sleep. For now our salvation nearer than when we believe, the night is far spent, the days are hand. Let us therefore cast off the work of darkness, and let us put on the armor of light. Those who watch, they are porn, sexual, devilish music, and hip-hop music, and all country music, new age gospel music that now they sing and pretend to love Jesus, love sick, sick mentalism, satanic beats that they add with the word of God, and those who go to their beach, wow, their beach is more than porn place, demonic or called devilish uncleanness. Their senses have become so confused that they cannot be trusted to make a right decision. Oh God, have mercy upon these souls that are deceived. These souls that don't know what's going on in this last day that are drawn unclean people that the Bible says come out from among them, touch not the unclean, be ye separate and I receive you to myself. Please God, save these souls. In this last days, the Bible predicts that all these things will come, but they deceive because they've forsaken the word of God. They've forsaken King James Bible. They don't like to read. They rather watch Freemasons, so-called Hollywood movies. Tell us why you're here. I'm going to sell my soul to the devil. What else? It's Hollywood. I want to be rich. I want to have everything. My price for selling my soul to the devil is wealth and power. Infamy. Fame. Maybe have my own reality show. Success in everything I've ever worked for. Absolute respect from people everywhere I go. I think the devil would want my soul mostly because I really am a good person. Satan would like my soul because I, like him, have learned to stand alone and be my own God. Why would the devil want my soul? I think because I have an innate ability to talk other people into following me down in, in a handbasket. 
a path to hell. He might like me because I'm a crowd gatherer. I'm very entertaining to uh, to torture. I'm very entertaining when I'm in pain. I think Satan would want my soul because the way I learned it in Catholic school is... You know, selling your soul to the devil is just way too rocky. About, you know, what was going on in my life at 15 and that's how I got introduced to the music industry. Is I swear I wanted to be like the Amy Grant of music. Yeah. <laughs> but it didn't work out, and so I sold my soul to the devil. Because your heart is sick. I sold my soul to the devil. I know it's a crappy deal. Music came with a few toys like a happy meal. If I can go back, I never would have rapped. I sold my soul to the devil, I'll never get it back. I just want to leave this game with level headed back. Imagine going from being. I wonder, can you save me? I can't die, my boo-boo's about to have my baby. I think it's too late for praying. Hold up, her voice spoke to me, and it slowly started saying, Bring your life down to me, you're making better. And how long will I live? Eternal life, live forever. Oh, will I believe that Jesus that I want? I'm making my better than you can imagine. I'm making dreams of some life so let me take control. Oh, will I believe that Jesus that I want? I'm making my better than you can imagine. I'm making dreams of some life so let me take control. Close your eyes, my son. My eyes are closed. Out here doing these songs, you know, you're still on tour. I do, but I don't take it for granted. Why do you still do it? Why are you still out here? Well, it goes back to the destiny thing. I, mean, I made a bargain with it, you know, a long time ago, and I'm holding up my hand. What was your bargain? To get where um, I am now. Sh should I ask who you made the bargain with? <laughs> with, 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 you know, with the chief, uh, chief commander. On this earth? <laughs> and on this earth and in, uh, and then in a world we can't see. My fellow Americans, we will no longer be oppressed by the fascism of Christianity. Now Roman Catholic Church leaders or papacy are controlling every president and Sunday pastors around the world so now they're pushing a gay agenda in churches and outside the church. Leviticus 18.22 Thou shalt align with mankind as with womankind. It is abomination. Jude 1 And the city about them in like manner, giving themselves over to fornication and going after strange flesh, are set forth for an example, suffering the vengeance of eternal fire. Watch this. Then I met the devil in God's country. It's not so much who, it's what, you know, what happens and, and the things that the devil does. It's not so much a person, even though he, he acts through people. This is God's country because I met the devil here. Because if I hadn't met the devil here, I wouldn't realize I was strong enough to overcome the obstacles that the devil would place in my path. And it's by overcoming these obstacles that I realize that this is God's country. Because he helped me get over these obstacles. He helped me get over these hurdles. Okay, so but when you're done, yeah. you're out of here. I'm not, I'm, I'm, I'm not looking back. You're not coming back? No, I'm not coming back. I'm not coming back for a show. I'm not coming back for a visit. I, I'm not even driving through the states. If I'm in a plane and they're gonna fly over, to, I'm gonna go around, okay? I think, <laughs> I think everyone who's watching knows how I ended up in here. I don't know if they do. I'm pretty sure they do. Anytime you get it, I'm pretty sure they do. You know, there's, there's, how do I end up in here? The reason God cannot take these secret societies or call devilish unclean people to heaven because they have made covenant with death and agreement with hell just like Isaiah 28 says. And they hate God so much because they were pagans. Remember the leaders of Roman Catholic? They used to rule the world, Roman Empire. Constantly unite them with the church. Pope became leader during dark ages so they pushing fashion dresses and all these satanic things that they want the whole world to become like them. 
That's why they have Babylon satanic educations for them. So when they go to all these worldly schools, they destroy their minds. They become pagans. Sodom and Gomorrah has repeated because they want everybody to go in darkness. That's why 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, the Bible says the devil will use all power. Now this world is in darkness. Please God, have mercy upon the ones that are deceived. Those that are making covenant with dead and agreement with hell. Isaiah 28, they don't want to go to heaven. They hate God and all they want is to control the world and they know their character. They cannot bring their character in agreement with the word of God. So because of that, they hate God. Just like the word of God says in Romans chapter 1. And now they are beach, carnival, festival, labor days. They dance, twig, sexual dances. They bring it outside because they want everybody to look them. They try to destroy everybody's mind. So that everybody will become like Sodomite. Please God save this world. Help everybody to turn their eyes off because you don't want us to look all these things. The Bible says if we lost after them, we sin. Please God help us to turn our eyes off and not look this demonic, sexual, immorality, sodomite, pagans that try to destroy everybody in these last days. Just like Isaiah 60 verse 2 says, The darkness shall cover the earth and grows darkness the people. The darkness has covered the earth and has grows darkness the people. Many people in this darkness. But what hurt me the most are the ones that that are deceived a lot of them that are part of these secret societies that are living this world in darkness they have taken part of the devil's controversy because they have joined the devil to deceive the world Bible says in Revelation 9 verse 12 the devil deceived the whole world Help your people to not watch them when they go to Facebook. Let them spread the gospel. Let them be careful to not watch their sexual immorality, devilish porn pictures and movies and all these satanic things that they post on YouTube and all them places. And even when they walk on the street, when they see fornication dresses, let them take their eyes off. Let them not feel like they look good. So I'm going to look once more. I'm going to look again. No, your word told us to not look and lost after them. Isaiah 33 verse 14. Notice what the word of God says. The sinners in Zion are afraid. Fearfulness has surprised the hypocrite. Who among us shall dwell with divine fire? Who among us shall dwell with everlasting burning? He that walketh righteously and speaketh uprightly. He that despised the gain of oppressions. That shaketh his hands from holding of bribes. That stopped his ears from hearing of blood. And shutted his eyes from seeing evil. Notice the last sentence of verse 15. It says, And shutted his eyes eyes from seeing evil this is what it says in verse 16 now the promise comes he shall dwell on high his place of defense shall be the munition of rocks when they force Sunday law when they follow us when they try to kill us those that we're gonna run to the mountains and rocks and caves and remote places notice bread shall be given him his waters shall be sure praise the Lord we have to take a stand we don't have to join them. They know that if you're in darkness, you cannot protest against them. So now they want everybody to become like them so that they don't rise up and protest against. They are satanic things that they're doing. So now one of their new world order agenda is to make every satanic drug legal. So we cocaine all these devilish drugs that destroy human brains and body. They're making them legal one by one. First Corinthians 6, 19 to 20. What? Know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost, which is in you, which ye have of God, and ye are not your own? For ye are bought with a price. Therefore glorify God in your own body and in your spirit which are God's. God says in Genesis 1.26, Let us make man in our image after our likeness. But unfortunate, this pagan says, No God, 
we don't like your image we want the image of the devil we want to be become more like the devil and worse than dumb animals so we're gonna go mad and hate you and uncover ourselves we're gonna be naked on the street we want to prove that we join the devil's controversy or controversy against you God the devil's kingdom that's all we want we want Babylon yes that's what they want because they love sin more than righteousness they hate God do you think God can take this people to heaven the Bible says the presence of God is consuming fire also Isaiah 33 14 to 16 we see that God's presence is fire that if you in darkness the fire is going to burn you up you cannot stand darkness always disappear when the light comes so these people if God take them to heaven the heaven is going to be like a torture place for them they cannot dwell in light because they love darkness so it's not God's fault God is love you cannot force somebody to love you God want us to love him back but he don't want to force everybody he don't want to open our head or brain and put batteries and make us walk like a robot I love you I love you I love you I love you like that no he don't want that he want intelligent being that they can love him back when God create human being he put something in us and if we don't love God back we're gonna be miserable we're not gonna be happy we can have the whole world we can have every money and everything all these people they miserable we happy because we have great hope but they don't have a hope when something happened to them they miserable some of them kill themselves we see a lot of famous they commit suicide all their money cannot buy them peace or happiness first Corinthians 6 15 know ye not that your bodies are the members of Christ shall I then take the members of Christ and make them the members of an holy God forbid thank you Jesus please help me to resist all this sodomy satanic porn devilish fornication half naked and almost naked and even sometimes some of them are naked help me to shut my eyes off and when my eyes look them like automatic when I can't control myself help me to turn my eyes off and not look again or try to even look to them first Corinthians 6 18 flee fornications every sin that a man do is without the body but he that commit fornication sin against his own body Bible says the mark of the beast means this power has a mark the beast is a language that God is using for this power and they themselves they says in their own book the book of Catechism the old version notice they says Sunday worship is their mark of authority the new version they don't use the word authority but at least thank God they still admit it even the new version of Catechism they still says they change the Sabbath from Saturday to Sunday friends the mark of the beast is not worldly speculations that sometimes you hear some people says well it's computer chip unfortunately you don't find in the Bible and some people says you know, it's 666 but according to relation 13 verse 18 actually 666 help you to find the beast what I mean is to identify the beast but the Bible says the mark and the reason why I repeat and I kind of stretch it because I don't want you to miss it it's a deception notice the mark of the beast it's clear it's not a mark that anybody can see it's a spiritual mark means they belong to the devil means they have cast their allegiance or they have given their allegiance to Pope the Antichrist Daniel chapter 7 verse 17 says the four beasts which thou saw are the four kings who reign on the earth Babylon is the first kingdom medo Persia Empire was the second kingdom and Greece third kingdom Rome fourth 
kingdom. So when Revelation 13 verse 18 says, here is wisdom. Let him who have understand calculate the number of the beast is a number of a man. His number is 666. So according to Revelation 13 verse 18, 666 help you to identify the beast. Roman Catholic Roman numerals some of them have a value some of them doesn't but when you put all of them together it end up to 666 constant to change the Sabbath from Saturday to Sunday but unfortunately Sunday churches they adopt Sun worship day for so many years they don't want to get rid of it but actually it's a pagan Sun worship day sunday worship look even the spellings you'll find out matter of fact if you look at your calendar sunday is always begin as the first day of the week unfortunately they will skip and some people they don't know they will count monday as the first day of the week because according to revelation chapter 12 verse 9 the devil will deceive the whole world so it's a deception so that the devil you know he's in the process blinding the, the people including the christian though friends if you go to church sunday notice the first day church now you don't have the mark of the beast according to revelation 14 and 13 unless the law it's an enforce that's why now you hear different country they try to force the people to not sell or do anything on Sunday because they try to enforce the law but according to Bible notice United States is the one who's gonna cause the whole world to worship the beast they are Sun worship day means Sunday worship according to Revelation 13 so whenever United States enforce the law and every country also gonna enforce because they control the whole world every president on the Roman Catholic Church today's Sunday law news report features an interesting news item that ought to make you sit up and pay close attention now Take a look at this. It's a massive encounter with the Pope. The family's coming from five continents for this special pilgrimage and some one-on-one -on -one time with the Bishop of Rome himself. This morning, the Pope is once again breaking from tradition. This time at an annual event for families where 150,000 families from 70 countries join the Pope in Rome to profess their faith. Now, for the first time, hundreds of children and elderly people are standing side by side with the Pope. Instead of in the audience, emphasizing the importance of different generations. The Pope saying Saturday, So many families are there. The Vatican City wants to be known as the capital of the family. The Pope says he'll close out the, out the event, blessing all families around the world. What an event, huh? And quite an event. You know, it's really interesting. There was a report out this morning that says tourism in Rome has actually gone up no since kidding. this Pope yeah, arrived. His popularity wow. continues to rise. Amazing. Great to see you, Gio. That sounds pretty good, doesn't it? Who doesn't want a social day devoted to families? Who doesn't desire a day where the emphasis is on love for our family and everyone else's? It's a great idea in light of the current attack on traditional family values. But let's take a closer look at this, shall we? When we shine the light of the gospel onto this new satanic effort to recognize Sunday as the day of rest, we'll see that this is just the beginning of persecution for Sabbath keepers. Now, friend, what is this family day all about? The Pope desires that all families have a work-free Sunday. Families should be free from work so that on Sunday, children could be together with their parents and relatives and go to church as well. The Pope also suggests that we should discover the true meaning of Sunday observance on this family day. The good news of the family is a very important witness of evangelization. Pope Francis was speaking to participants of the 21st Plenary Assembly of the Pontifical Council for the Family. Now, it's interesting that the UN and the Vatican 
are working together for this family day, which will be each and every Sunday. Families will have a rest upon this day. Be together with the children and go to church and so on. Do you see the strategy? The Pope desires to promote Sunday as the day of rest for all families throughout the world. He calls Sunday the family day. The previous Pope Benedict said, and I quote, by defending Sunday, one defends human freedom. Benedict said this during his weekly general audience in St. Peter's Square, just after he had attended a family day gathering in Milan, Italy. Pope also said, and I quote, Sunday must be a day of rest for everyone. This is in the Catholic News Service, June 20, 12. There it is, friend, straight from the beast himself. Friend, this is so crystal, crystal clear. The next step is the enforcement of a Sunday law. Everything else is now, is now in place. Everyone else is on board. Now only waiting for life to be breathed into the Sunday law. So when the Pope says that we should have Sunday as a day of rest for the family, he's promoting the counterfeit, unbiblical day of rest. Sunday means the S-U-N day and not the S-O-N day. The test lies before us whether we will worship Him who created heaven and earth and all that is in them, or we will worship the beast and receive his mark. This is dealing with worship, my friend. Whom will you worship and serve? Will you have God as your authority or will you have the Pope as your authority? Will you be loyal to the Creator or will you be loyal to people and their laws against God's law? This is the test that lies right before us. May the Holy Spirit help you and may God help you as you follow Him. We know according to history, Jesus Christ rose from the dead Sunday. So even his dead body, he kept the Sabbath. Just like the Bible says, all things was made by him. When he finished his work, the end of creation, according to Genesis chapter 2, verse 1 to 3, he kept the Sabbath. And also, when he finished his work of redemption, he says it is finished, and he kept the Sabbath, even his dead body. And he rose from the dead Sunday that the Bible says was the first day of the week. According to Luke chapter 24 verse 1 to 3. Friends, Saturday is always the Sabbath. The seventh day of the week. Notice, and again, it's always Saturday. And that's why the Bible says the seventh day is the Sabbath. Jewish nation, even though I'm not Jewish, they still keep the Sabbath Saturday. And also... Encyclopedia, you will find it even different, different language. If you speak Spanish, Sabado means Saturday. Friends, this, this is a beautiful time in history because we only one step away from heaven. The mark of the beast, the worship issue in Revelation chapter 13. If you get time, read it because Revelation chapter 13, verse 12, it's a worship issue, and verse 15, it's a worship issue, and verse 8 is a worship issue. And the Bible helps us to understand that behind the scene, Revelation 13 is the devil he wants the whole world to worship him first you have to escape you have to study your bible christ is calling you whether you are christian or not whenever you hear sunday worship in any countries do not accept it god is going to protect you bible says our bread and water will be sure according to revelation 16 whenever national sunday law or sunday law come to history if you accept sunday law you're going to receive the wrath of God that is pour out with our mixture. That's why God is warning the whole world right now that we don't have to receive the mark of the beast. Please, Jesus Christ, help us to separate ourselves from all these evil things. Help us to not live among them. You spoke through your servant, Ellen G. What he says, out of cities, out of cities. The last days, the message. You told us to work at post. You told us to live in the country like two miles away from worldly people. You told us to come in the city and work and then go back, help us to go back and live like John the Baptist because according to Malachi chapter 4 verse 4, 
to 5 you says we're gonna come like the spirit of Elijah just like John the Baptist prepare people for your first coming Jesus Christ save us in this last days in Jesus name I pray amen by the grace of God I make this video only for those involved in this devilish satanic deception those who go to club carnival festival beach memorial day and labor days those who participate in this satanic sexual immorality those who watch them on youtube facebook and different websites these are the ones that i make this video for for god to save them and bring them out of darkness because some of the image on this video i don't want christians to watch or look because me myself, I struggle to see and I didn't want to see it or I didn't want to look because I see them different places and I said, well, somebody got to come out of this darkness. So that's the reason I made it and I pray a lot about it because I was struggle to do this. Okay, friends? So try to not show them because of some of the images. If you really want to show them the same people, show them to those who are among this deception or those who are involved in this deception. These are the ones that I want them to come out from devilish Babylon sexual immorality. Otherwise, do not share with Christians because some of the images, it's not good for them to see it. Because the word of God is clear in Isaiah 33 verse 14 to 16. says, we shut our eyes to see evil. Blood shall be given him in his waters. Shall be sure. So our eyes is not going to look evil. If you want to watch a lot of present true videos that will prepare you in these last days, visit the7thunders.com. You can download a lot of videos or audios for free. And watch them. They changed our three inches logo 1995. They brought this new logo. This is yellow six frame all C9 triangle secret society logo because they think they're gonna overcome seven day Adventists. But praise the Lord, they cannot overcome those we on the foundation of Adventists. If you visit every seven day Adventist and if you don't see this two big chart that you see on the screen don't go come out fast as possible because you're not gonna see seven day adventist teachers or pastors unfortunately you're gonna see ravening wolves roman catholic church leaders that are preterned that they seven day vanish and they're gonna lead you to hell because the bible says if a blind leads blind they both will fall into a dish I can't believe these people can go so far like this. Romans 1, 28, 32. And even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, God gave them over to reprobate mind. Do those things which are not convenient. Being filled with all unrighteousness, fornication, wickedness, covetousness, maliciousness, full of envy, murder, debate, deceit, malignity, whispered, backbiters, haters of God, despiteful, proud, boasters, inventors of evil things, disobedient to parent, without understanding, covenant breakers, without natural affection, implicable, unmerciful, who know with the judgment of God that they which commit such things are worthy of death? Notice the word of God continues, says, not only those who do them or not only do the same, but have pleasure in them that do them. Galatians 3.1 Oh foolish Galatians, who has bewitched you that you should not obey the truth? Before whose eyes Jesus Christ has been evidently set forth crucified among you. They set up new world order so that they can control the world and bring everybody on the Roman Catholic Church. The affirmative task we have now is to create a new world order. 
Now we can see a new world coming into view. A world in which there is the very real prospect of a new world order. That I offered to myself that we needed a new world order. Pope Benedict XVI is calling for a new world financial order in the third encyclical of his pontificate. Globalized economy. The document was released just hours before the G8 summit. So notice. The power behind the scene secret societies. Notice what is Skull and Bones, Illuminati, Masons, and all them groups. They have one master. Raising the leaders of papacy or called Roman Catholic hate United States is because when the pilgrims father they came to United States, they didn't want to have anything to do with Pope and Kings. That's one of the reasons they create gangs for Protestant children to kill them and destroy them. They make them hate each other so that they can control United States. When all who wear America's uniform remain the cornerstone of our national defense, the anchor of global security, we have to shape an international order that can meet the challenges of our generation. The international order we seek is one that can resolve the challenges of our times. A new world order is emerging. Gordon Brown's verdict as he closes the G20 summit. From America to Ethiopia, they all signed up to a trillion boost for world trade. We'll have reaction around the world and ask what it means for Britain also tonight. the opportunity to forge for ourselves and for future generations a new world order as I saw this last days as I 60 verse 2 notice for behold the darkness shall cover the earth and grows darkness the people and then God promises people those that we're gonna come out from among them and touch not the unclean but the Lord shall rise upon thee, and his glory shall be seen upon thee. This is the promise that God has promised those that we're now going to partake of this satanic, devilish dresses and unclean fornication, almost naked. Even some of them are naked. Wow, is this fashion or madness? When Adam and Eve sinned in Genesis, when they saw that God was coming, they covered their nakedness. When, when the people are naked in our last days and almost naked and half naked means they demonic possessed because if you're not demonic possessed you're not gonna uncover yourself that's what Isaiah says for, for behold darkness shall cover the earth and gross darkness the people most of the parties were set up by them the devil's red mass and the two horn on top of it. They try to prove to the whole world that they are agencies of Satan that are leading the whole world in darkness. But a lot of people don't understand. Raising the dance sexual dances because they want everybody to dance like this. They own all the fashion companies. So they're using fashion companies like never before. They have final goals to make people walk naked on the street. Once in a while you see some of them walking naked on the street because they want the whole world to follow them. Revelation 18 verse 2 And he cried mightily with a strong voice saying Babylon the great is fallen and is fallen and is become the habitation of devils and the whole of every far spirit and the cage of ever unclean and hateful birds. Wow! Look how God identified these people, unclean, demonic, possessed, hateful birds. It's like a birds that are dude on themselves, that look so dirty, half naked, naked. <laughs> Thank you.
October 21st. This cannot be. I do not know how this will be taken by you, but I am sure this manner of dress arouses sinful passions in the customers as they walk by. Sinful passions? Yes, sinful passions of promiscuity, especially in the younger males. We must be careful as to the example we portray to our young people, for the goodness of all society. Sir, I appreciate you voicing your opinion, and I'll be sure to let my father know, and I want to thank you. But to be honest, this is the first complaint we've had like this. Our customers, most of them don't seem to mind this sort of thing. Okay? Stop the movie! You must stop this movie! The man on the screen just blasphemed the name of the Lord! There must be some mistake! You must stop this movie! This is an abomination! Eddie, I wanted to speak with you again about the importance of attending a local church. Oh, I go to church, yeah. Christmas, Easter. Yes, but we need to attend church more than two times a year for spiritual growth. Oh, well, you know, at least I ain't never been to the Slammer. Slammer? Yeah, the big house, jail, clink, clink. But, Man, I thought my English was bad. But, Eddie, we need consistent Bible study and fellowship if we're to become mature spiritual men. Shh. Yeah. Jesse Gonzaga and even almost naked people sodomite groups wow let's continue verse 3 for all nations have drunk of the wine of the wrath of her fornication and the kings of the earth or president of the earth have committed fornication with her and the merchant of the earth are wax rich through the abundance of her delicacies Notice what it says in verse 4. And I heard another voice from heaven saying, Come out of her, my people, that she be not partakers of her sin, that she receive not her plagues. For her sin hath reached unto heaven, and God has remembered her iniquities. This parable video will blow up your mind, so watch it carefully. Matthew 13.34 says that Jesus spoke to the multitudes in parables. And transport a person through time as in time travel this is impossible no it is possible Russell traveled over 100 years into the future <laughs> over 100 years to the 20th no the 21st century correct you <laughs> this is an absurdity it is the truth Russell no as time travel is impossible I'm afraid that your illness has affected your judgment more than I thought. My friend, time travel is possible. What proof can you provide? This is why I have arranged a journey for you. A journey? For me? Yes. Into the future. <laughs> oh, come now. Russell, you must see where the teaching of good morals alone will lead. You must see for yourself what happens when we remove the authority of Christ out of life? Oh!